Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose what Yow! Oh, baby, we're here. We're queer. Picking it up. Kicking it back. <laughs> putting it down. You can pick it up and put it down. Drop it when it's hot and pick it up when it's cold. There we go. Hot potato. Yes. That was an old uh, Santino joke. The N-word's like a hot potato. You know, you, you, they throw it to you, you, you just throw it back. And like if a black guy said it, it's a funny bit. Good it's bit. very funny. Funny guy. Absolutely. I had a, last night I was at the stand and uh, comedy club, packed out, sold out, very exciting. You got that right. Great lineup. Ari Shafir, yeah. myself, uh, somebody else. I can't remember. Uh, Doesn't matter, really. Who the hell was John on? Wayne Gacy. No, who was on? Ted Bundy. John Wilkes Booth. Um, Mick Jagger. Uh, I forget who else was on. Anyways, uh, Ari like was there. A I was on. Up. A hotline. Oh, Berg was on. Okay. And then I got this movie. Yeah, I ordered Berg. a pizza so I wouldn't have to follow him because uh, it was Aaron Berg, then Ari, and then me. Yeah. And Joe Herrera, the manager there, he knows I like to leave early or be done sure. early. So he's like, hey, you can go after Aaron if you want. Ari's not here yet. He crushes that kid. And, and Burr, I just hear like... Bah. Yeah, and he's like, "Look at you, you Muslim, drop a bomb!" Bah. They're going crazy. He's crowd surfing. Yeah, and I go, "Let me get a cheese pizza real quick, as fast as you can. Get it out of the oven." And uh, three seconds later, the pizza comes, and I go, "Hey, Joe, actually, I I, I can't go next. I got a pizza yeah. here. I got to eat." <laughs> and uh, so Ari had to go. He bombs, of course. Yeah, that's what he does. But. Um, can he hey. shave the beard? He looks horrific. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Looks like an old Jewish sea captain. Like, he's got a tugboat out there. There was no Jewish sea captains. What are yeah, you kidding? They would have well, thrown him off the side. Somebody's got to get the locks and, uh, and the shrimp and the clam, whatever they eat. Yeah, a Jewish sailor. You don't think of the Jews on, a, like, a navy. I guess, did Noah go somewhere? Didn't he walk? Or he marched? Yeah. Is that yeah, Selma? He, he walked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 40, 40 days, 40 nights. That sounds right. 40 acres and a mule. Uh-huh. Uh, drinking 40s. 40, 40, 40. That was Jose Canseco. 40 stolen bases, 40 home runs. Uh, I thought it was 30 for 30. That's the movie. I see. But I don't think Jose is a Jew. Canseco, I believe no. he's he Hispanic. He's got to be, but he ain't Mexican. He's too tall. Very big, big son of an onion. Big drug addict. He had the uh, the ball go off his head and over the fence. That has to be the oh, really? single most embarrassing thing ever. Boom. Trying to catch a fly ball. must have hurt. It's probably going 110 sure. miles an hour. That ball ain't soft. Right off the dome and <laughs> home run. Yeah. What is hardball? You always hear about hardball because it's softball. <laughs> Right? Hardball is a nickname for baseball, That's but what I also figured. a metaphor that Chris Matthews had hardball. Which yes. DePaulo had that great joke. He said they should call it spitball. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Matthews, he had like he talked like this. Yeah, yeah. Also, always interrupting people. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so small, so funny. But yeah. so hardball, I think, is you're playing hardball. Yeah. Which just means like, hey, I'm not budging. But that's just baseball. Yeah, that's what's weird about. It. That's why I was that kid. I was confused. I'm like, all right, we got softball, we got baseball. He's playing hardball. <laughs> so is, is, am I missing something? But it's just baseball. Well, hardball, I guess, is a version of baseball. We're gonna really play hard out yeah, there. Yeah, all right, all right. But it's still baseball. Yeah, got it. Okay, caught the end of uh, Moneyball. That's a hell of a picture. Great film, Jonah Hill. He won't stop texting me. What a film and uh, good time. And what's this, Chris Pratt? Is in that is movie. He? Yeah, he plays Scott Hatterberg, former ah, Boston Red Sox. How about Brett? But uh, how about that? I had a fun <laughs> game going. I was playing with my niece and nephew, and I said, I'm going to say how about that in, uh, what's this, it was Mel Allen's voice 100 times today. Jesus Christ, we're out of we're out of toys, huh? And uh, we got to like 28, and they were like, please, if you could, like, yeah. real serious, like, if you could stop doing that. Yeah, that's a little autistic like, Rain Manny. Uh, how about that? So everything we said, <laughs> I would just say. I would do it. It's fun. That's two. It's very fun. Give it a try. It's a fun name. How about that? 
That's not bad. Uh, I gotta hear it. I haven't heard it. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. He's, it was exciting. That would be fun to be a, a color commentator and have a thing, like have a, a like almost a catchphrase. Yeah, put the peanut butter on my dick and let the dog lick it up. That ball's gone. That's a little long, but I'll take it. <laughs> Something like that, you know. Don't go crunchy. But we essentially have that. Yeah, I guess our so. Own, uh, pipes. Yeah, where are the cameras? Program, yeah, George is saying cut it. Sure, none of them are ours, but <laughs> <laughs> still something. That's true. I think those are yeah, those are all sign. Well, sign is fun. By the way, I was on Sal's another Seinfeld guy. You got that right. So I'm on Taste Buds, and all I could do is just keep doing Seinfeld lines, and then he would do them back. And DeRosa's a Seinfeld guy, but he's in. His, he's like so worked up in the argument that he's like, "What are you saying? What yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah." And a, uh, odd duck that DeRosa. He's something. He's something, all right. Hopefully, he'll be in Philly with us tonight. Maybe, probably not. Oh. But tonight, Philadelphia. Yes. We're coming at you. Yes. Do you have your tickets yet? Many of you don't. Please. What's the venue called? I have no idea. It's uh, the Theater of the Living Arts, and it's a great theater. It's a great rock club. Everybody theater loves of the it. Living Arts. We've sold 11 tickets. We forgot to promote. So please, get on your phones. Get on the app. See us tonight in Philly. We got Umar Khan. That'll bring in some tickets. Yeah, I'll get the Pakistani vote. Yeah, there you go. Pakistan, they got nukes. Careful. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know they had nukes. Big time. Ah. He's, he's, he's got nukes, Umar. I, I know it's Indian, but I just watched Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. What'd you think? I don't remember. I didn't love that movie, but maybe I have to give it another shot. It's wildly over the top. It's very 2008, uh-huh. meaning like the lady has zero depth. She has no character development in it. And at the end, they even call her for the lifeline. And she goes, I don't know. And you're like, this is your big contribution, you dirty whore. I get that. And what's Million Dollar Baby? Those came out like million the same baby, year. This yeah. Million Dollar Baby Slumdog Millionaire. It's a lot I remember of millions. One time, my girlfriend at the time back then, way back... She was like, she hated movies. She never watched movies. She right. loved Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, okay. And she had like some kind of procedure. She had her dick removed or whatever. Ah, uh, yes. So I went out and I was like, I'm going to get her a good gift. I got her some magazines and I bought Million Dollar Baby. Because uh, I had the million in my head. Wrong and she mill. was like, oh, I'll, I'll watch this. I, I, I heard it's good. And I'm yeah. like, that's your favorite movie. And she's oh. like, no, it's not. Oh, no. But I just remember watching it with her and I think I was drunk and high and... and Whatever, it's sad. Yeah. And being like, okay, it's fine. Wow, million to one. I didn't care for Million Dollar Baby either. I hated both millionaire movies. Million Dollar Baby is way worse than Slum. Right. Slum has moments and it's cute and it's well done. Uh, but it's um it's a little silly. Like everything, you know, they're like Every question, not to ruin it, but every question on Millionaire. 15 years. Yeah, is uh, is a thing he experienced. So it just worked out. Right. And he's like, they're like, who's on the $100 bill? And he has this memory of a kid giving him a $100 bill. And you're like, oh, he couldn't give you 50? Wait, that's the plot? Yeah. And he goes on, who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't even remember. I said this last week, I think. We're at an age good. now where I just don't remember films that I saw. Yeah, it's scary. Well, we've seen a lot of film. A lot of movies, meet a lot of people. Yeah, you got that right. And now, no one watches movies. You know, know, you see Barbie. If you see Barbie, you're good for like eight years. You right. know, no one sees Barbie and then 30 other movies. They see Oppenheimer, they see Barbie, and that's it. Have you seen Barbie? No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I can't bring myself to watch. But I'm getting mixed reviews. Yeah. The people... That I really feel similar to me, say I'm like, I got you. Yeah, like it. Sarah, who knows me, she's like, I don't think this is for you. I see. Because I'll just be going, Are you fucking kidding me? Right. But any jizz. Does everything have to have a message? I love Margot Robbie. I love Ryan Gosling. And I, I love, love my I father. Like, I like Gerwig. I love Gerwig. Yes. Love Gerwig. Well, what did anyway. Sarah? What did Sarah say? Well, she hasn't seen it, but oh. she just read about it. I was see. like, I think it's gonna be one of the because you know she watches commercials with me where I'm like this. Oh, here we go. I got the Apollo <laughs> syndrome <laughs> where I'm like, so this guy's married to this. Okay, sure. Right, right, right. Apollo really got deep in my head on this stuff, so I just everything I have to be like, that's bullshit. That's crazy. Yeah, the commercials. They, I I can see it, but it doesn't really bother me. When the guy is stupid, he puts uh, orange juice in the toaster. He's like, uh oh. Oh, try to make breakfast. Mom's out of town, and I'm like, all right. Like, every guy's an idiot, but it doesn't bother me. Hmm. I don't get angry. You get angry? 
I don't get angry, but I'm like, well, I get angry. Well, now we're going to go off on some all crazy right, thing. Right. I don't get what I get angry about is the pretending that's not the tr- case. Yes. That's that, what makes me angry. I'm with you there. At least acknowledge it. Is this acknowledge that like every single man on TV is like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, and, like right. retarded. <laughs> right, and right. Uh, all, the, all well. the teachers and the bosses are, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Well, Biden isn't helping that, though. Biden. He's not helping the the man on TV thing. What do you mean? What's he supposed to do? Make a commercial? Well, not fall or get a sentence out. I'm saying like, oh, I see. If you if you're gonna go, hey, uh, the, not every man on TV, every man on TV is a fucking bumbling idiot in a commercial. Then we got the president who's like, oh, corn pop. I suppose so, but I mean, I'm not. He's not on sitcoms. He's, uh, no, he's, he's leading the country yeah. quietly in a in a cell or wherever he is. Sure. But I guess I never see him too much. I don't. I don't watch the news too much anymore. Good. I don't either. It's it's too depressing. I get it from the podcast. By the way, Sam Harris' new podcast about nuclear war. We're all gonna die. My son's doomed. We're fucked. Oh really? That's where the Pakistan thing came from. Ah. Umar. Anyways, so Umar is at the, the live Tuesday <laughs> stories. We'll Check ask, it out. We'll ask him about the nukes. See what his parents are doing. Hot dog. Duke Nukem. Uh, yeah, who is that? Video game. Video game guy. He uh, he was mean and tough, and he killed aliens. Did you ever play any of the shooty things? I gave it about eight minutes, and then I jerked off. I never gave a shit about one. I liked Contra on Nintendo. Oh, I did enjoy that because you got a big gun. You kept getting bigger guns. Contra was fun. Double Dragon, a Bobo. You had to fight a Bobo. A Bobo. That was his name, right, Chuck? You're a nerd. Uh, a Bobo. A Bobo. Double Bobo. Dragon. I think he was in a yeah, Bobo. That's yeah. my favorite. Bobo or Obobo. I think it's Obobo. Can we get a Google on that? I think that's an instrument. You think of the oboe. Yeah. No, but this is Obobo. Oh. It's like an Irish instrument. I see. The Obobo. Oh, I don't know Obobo. I I think he was in uh, Blood Diamond. Look up Double Dragon Nemesis. I think it's a Bobo. And then you kicked him in the face. Wait, Double Dragon? What happened to Contra? No, I switched from Double Dragon. Contra to Double Dragon. Contra was guns. Double Dragon was kicks. Ah, got it, got it. I'm pretty sure. It would be like you and me walking around kicking people, and then the last guy, he was a big muscle head named a Bobo. I remember now. Okay. But I could be... Am I on to something here? He's a, he, yeah, a Bobo. Yeah, a- baby! A-B-O-B-O. A-B-O-B-O. He's a recurring enemy in the Double Dragon series. Is Fuck he, yeah. What ethnicity? Uh, it, he's brownish. Oh, okay. Oh, is he? He's probably like Somalian or something. Yeah, no, he's, they're he's, not muscular. He's, he's depicted True. as a shirtless, tall, bald, strong man. He looks... Pretty uh, dark ethnic to me. I think he's like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy guy a little bit, mm. but that's a good guy. Yeah. What's that guy's name? What uh, Drax? No. Guardians of the Galaxy. Drax yeah, the is guy, the Batista. big guy, Batista. Batista. Yeah, yeah his name I think he's like Batista. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got I think his it, name's got ba- it. Drax yeah. Queen. Similar. He's, okay. he's like Batista, but uh, whatever. I see. But he had a big. I think he had like jeans and no shirt, and he would conk you on yeah, the head. Yeah, that was big. A Bobo. That was pretty much every video game villain. What a poll. Now it's RFK Jr. Jeans, no shirt. Uh. Hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp. Everybody needs advice sometimes. Therapy is an amazing way to talk about your emotions, get the advice you need, and grow into a better version of yourself. BetterHelp's online therapy is incredible, and it's so easy to get started. Just take a short quiz to get matched with a licensed therapist and get ready to have someone who's on your team. You need a teammate. If you need to switch therapists for any reason, you can change at any time for no additional charge. No questions asked, baby. Preguntas. Look, you got to do therapy. I do it. Joe does it. We love it. Big Al, he's our guy. I will say, though, it sucks going into the office. It sucks going to meet him. It's a whole hike, especially in this goddamn town. Now you can do it right online, and you can pick, and it's, I'll tell you, it's uh, its always awkward to fire a therapist or leave a therapist, but this way makes it easy. If you don't find the guy you like or the gal you want, you mix, you match, easy peasy. This takes all the inconvenience out of therapy. Um... So get on BetterHelp. It's designed to be flexible, convenient, and suited for your schedule. So you can have your sessions whenever and wherever works for you. You can choose to have video, phone, or even message your therapist. Wow, totally up to you. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it!
Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. If you want to give yourself a gift every month that you'll know you'll love, Fab Fit Fun is the answer. It's the best way to save on beauty and lifestyle products so you can treat yourself without overpaying out the wazoo. As a Fab Fit Fun member, you'll get exclusive access to shop thousands of curated products from top brands like Fenty, Kate Spade, and more, up to 70% off. These aren't your sample size, low quality bargain bin kind of deals either. Fab Fit Fun has so many subscribers that they place huge orders with big promotions, passing those savings right on to you. This is incredible. Get the cool gear you like without paying the big old ticket price. We all know how these places can jack it up, hike it up. Well, now you got the inside scoop on all the deals and nobody knows about it. You know, it's not a knockoff Louis Vuitton. It's a real Louis Vuitton, but you got it at the good price secretly. It's a pretty cool little move there. I highly recommend it. Enjoy name brand, full-size products of your favorites, new brands, and one you've always wanted to try at discount prices you won't find anywhere else. They got the inside scoop. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash Tuesdays with an S. Customize your box and get access to discounts up to 70% off on brands like Fenty, Free People, and Our Place, to name a few. Not in love with this season's options? Well, take the credit to shop their exclusive flash sales up to 70% off and save on the biggest name brands out there. That's fabfitfun.com slash Tuesdays. F-A-B-F-I-T-F-U-N dot com slash Tuesdays. Get on it and save a couple bucks. Not any farts. Where the fuck are we? I don't even know what's going on here. I don't know. We're off on a bobo. Hot start. Philly tonight. The special. uh, Thanks for watching. We're at three and a half million views already over the weekend. Yeah, really. Killing it. Broke really? the algorithm, the internet. Everybody loved it. Really took off. It probably has 11 views. I'm releasing on a Friday. And everything changes this uh, goddamn algorithm. Friday night. What do you think? I'm like, Friday night? And, and and Katz is like, what are you nuts? You piece of shit. You got to release it on a Tuesday. And I said, we did the last two on a Friday. And he's like, that's a good point. And then Ari, forget about it. He's like, you got to release at 3 p.m. You fucking asshole. I, I, don't, I thought Friday night was a big premiere. That's what I, growing up, Friday night, was. It's, it's opening night. Well, our whole lives, you know, people want specials came out on Friday or Saturday, and you do it for the fans that you already have mm, to watch. Sure. And then you hope it uh, takes off. Skyrocket. And I did it at 10 p. Ari's like, that's too late. Your father's gay. But I'm like, I care about the Pacific Ocean people. Ah, uh, yes. It's seven to them. Yeah. And 3 a.m. to the Londoners. They'll watch it in the morning. Who knows about the algorithm? Who cares? Maybe no one will watch. Fuck me. Fuck my father. Top of the morning to you, Patio Bobo. A Bobo, baby. But yeah, no, I think you're fine. 10 does feel a smooch late, but hey, who's counting? And it's on YouTube. It'll live forever like uh, like a lobster or Betty White. But you factor in who's going to bed at 10. Those aren't the people watching my special the night it comes out. Not on a Friday, I'll tell you that. And everyone's like, oh, summer, the weekends. No one's doing shit. Here's, let me let you in a little, a little secret. True, true. Ain't nobody doing nothing. You got that right. Everyone's at home. <laughs> you go, even when they go on vacation, people are in St. Bart's. They're fucking looking at their phone, yeah. watching us go. <laughs> right. Right, right, like it's, a dad in a commercial. People watch. They're watching. Nobody, it's not like fucking 1958. They're going to get the Saturday evening post and going to a matinee and kissing their parents. No, they're no. They're at home. They're at home. They're doing nothing. Everybody's streaming. Everybody's Netflixing and chill. That's all it is. No one's fucking. I'll yes, tell you that. Exactly. I mean, you got college football Saturday night, uh, NFL Sunday night, fights UFC, or UFC. Sat- yeah. They start at 1 o'clock in the morning. All very late. Yes. So You, you have a point. 10 is not bad. 11 p.m. Friday night. People are staying up and 7 p. People are home. So we'll see. I'm probably wrong. Every single instinct I have is incorrect. You got that true. But also you go out, you have a drink, you come back, you go, oh, I'm a little wonky. Boop. I could use a chuckle. Stick it on. By the way, my legs are so dry. You ever get this? Oh, you got a little eczema. I was, they're so dry. I was itching my my leg with my shoe like this. And then it like scabbed over. I ripped my leg up. This is like the recovery. I've done that because that can spread, fatty. You got to watch out. Spread? No, this is like a scar. I know, but it can spread. Spread like, what? Spread the 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 butter. I mean, you got to be careful. You just don't want to keep scratching it because it'll just it'll get infected and grow. Ah. Yeah. So leave it be. Well, last night I put some uh, 
uh, moisturizer. I see. Put a little moisturizer because my legs are just very dry. I don't, do you moisturize your legs? I see no. these people doing moisturizing everything. Women do that. I see a lot of black women, cocoa butter. My lady does it. She wants to be black. But no, no leg. I, I don't wash my feet either. I, I don't do anything <laughs> below the knee. Feet look like hell. It looks like I've been running through the forest with a slave. The feet are one of the four or five body parts you actually have to wash. No. It's feet, armpit, genitals, hands, face. face. Oh. Everything else is fine. I've Everything never else heard feet. Drip off. Of course, your feet stink. That's like the number one stinky, stinky feet. I'm up here. I don't notice. I had somebody ruin a couch. I don't want to say who. They stayed at my house back in the day, and the couch, we had to throw it in the trash. No. I'm telling you, feet stink. Was it me? Feet? No. Okay, no. feet hand. called my roommate Samoan a bunch, which- Was it him? His, very much hurt his feelings. What? What's the wrong with being Samoan? It's a great cookie. Well, he's not Samoan. <laughs> Wow, all right, but you call me uh, Chinese, I'm not going off the handle. You're Samoan, an apology. <laughs> oh, Bobo, that was his name. Uh, but any farts, yeah, feet, the bot, the feet are a stinky stink conductor. All the sweat is right. in there, they're soaked in. Feet are a go-to must-wash. And Sal Volcano, speaking of him, he hit me too, because I'll repeat a sock. I'll wear a sock till the cows yeah, come home. Same. He, he's like, that's going to fuck your shoe, because now you got a stinky sock in your shoe, and it's just... Breeding jizz and bacteria, your shoes are fucked. Well, he's a little cuckoo though. With oh, the, is he? The germs and okay, all the stuff. Okay, good. I think. Yeah, but yeah, I've done the same thing. I wear a sock. I go by like feel. I'm like, I put that on at four p. Didn't right. really work out. Ah, I'll double up on the sock. Yeah, and I gotta cool it with the sock jizz because uh, my socks are crunchier than a bag of cereal. I'm all paper towel with the jizz. Really? And in the hotel, I'm I get the full bath towel. I, I do really the same. wipe and swipe, and when you mistake it, it's no good. Oh, uh, yeah, when you reuse it later. Yeah, with the pizza, you get the Domino's delivery, and then you wipe the, uh, the oh. sauce off. I got extra sauce, and I ripe it with extra cum, and Woo. forget about it. That ain't ranch. Yeah, <laughs> I'll put the towel down. It's like a runway, and I just, my dick's like an airplane, and poof, just shoot all over it. It's a good time. I even got the little guy going... He waves me in. How grateful are you for masturbation? Uh, How, I mean, what would your life be without that? It saved lives. I think if these school shooters were yanking a little more, we might have some uh, less dead casualty kids. I love a yank. I still yank. Not as much as I used to, of course. Yankee but doodle. Dandy. Sometimes I prefer a yank over a bang. Yes, I see. What, you know what you mean? Patrice had that great joke. He's like, the whole time I'm fucking a woman, I'm just thinking, I'm looking forward to jerking off to this. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like, you don't have to deal with the feeling and like, am I doing okay? Letting her down, not getting her off, uh, her waking up, whatever it is. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's just as soon as she's got your by yourself independent, you can really yes. enjoy that jerk. You can enjoy the jerk. I ain't nobody home jerk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to really that? get in there. Did he invent who dat? Who dat? Chris Rock in that joke. Doesn't he say, or does he say who dare, who dat? Who dare. Who dare. Yeah, oh, okay. who dare. Oh, well, he invented who dare. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, well, who dat is the Saints, and I think they had that since the, the 70s. What is that? Who dat? It's a it's Cajun kind of Creole black ebonic speak of like, who's that going to say they're going to beat them Saints? So they, they just got shortened to who dat? Who's that saying they're gonna beat them Saints? That's how they talk down there. Who's oh. that saying they're gonna beat them Saints? Oh, I see. Oh, it's the the Packers. Ah, uh -uh. who that? It got shortened. <laughs> oh, that stinks. Well, you know, vernacular. <laughs> I didn't invent it. That's, that's but it gay. caught on, and uh, it's part of the vernacular, the zeitgeist. Because then the Bengals have who day? Who's what's who day? Who day? Is they gonna beat the Bengals? Who day? I don't know. Who day? Who say? Who do who? I don't know. I don't know. I think those are Umar's cousins, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. But I think they say who day. I don't know where that started. Give a who day a goo. Give if me, you don't mind who day. there. I think it's D E Y. Who day? Who day? Who gay? But Cincinnati. I mean, that's me. just you know Ohio. Yeah. Who day? Huh? What's the? Is that etymology? Cincinnati. But yeah, I mean, what does I, mean, it I know mean? It's Cincinnati. But where does it come from? When did it start? What if it was before who dat? That would be oh god! Don't tell me that. That would really devastate some people. And give me it's, a year. It's from the Bengals. How did it start? What did Walk it mean? Like the whole big, you keep good talking. Band. I'll find out. Good soon. band. All right, all right. Who day? All right, who day? Get on that. Yeah, who day? What day is it? Oh, geez, my dad's birthday tomorrow. Is that right? right? Yeah, seventy-six. 
You got a birthday coming up. The big one. Big 4 0. Ooh. I know. Real kick to Ouch. the jugular. Jack's got something. So I guess there was a beer company called Huda Pool, like H U D E P O H L. And they would shout, Hootie, Hootie at the game to say we're selling beer. Uh. And then it kind of changed to Who Day in the, in the stands. Oh, People it's a beer saying, thing. Yeah. Mm. What year? Uh, it looks like the 80s. All right, we're okay. okay. Yeah. Who Day? I think that literally was Saddam's kid, though. Who Day and Kuse. And Kuse. Kuse. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that you was, say. That was another DePaulo joke. He goes, I'm staying at the uh, Best Western. This is the best. I'd hate to say the worst. You see the gym at this thing. It looks like Houdé and Kusei's rape room. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. No one's giving him more love on a pod than us. Funny guy. Well, no, he's the greatest and, uh, you know, a little rough around the edges, but funniest but guy of all time. To add in a Houdé and Kusei reference about a Best Western, is that takes a special kind of brilliance. Very funny, and uh, and rape room is just, uh, it's yeah. funny. Well, the idea of making a room, you know, like, this will be the nursery, <laughs> this is the living room, this is the rape room. That's yeah, and it's, and it's got one of those big balls in it and some yeah. dumbbells right, and like those, right. those bands. In case you got to stretch before the old... Pillage. Uh, yeah. What is a pillage? I don't know a pillage, and I don't know a plunder, quite frankly. A plunder. Yeah, the Pil- land down plunder. I do think it's rapey, though. It I can't be the, good. I think pillage is stab, and plunder is rape, or vice versa. Mm, pillage. I believe. It's okay. not good. And Nicole Smith was on a lot of pillage. Because I believe the Minnesota Vikings, they're next. They're going to get it next. No. Once but, but, we move on from the Native Americans, watch out. I think the Vikings are right because they're white. And you're white. Look at look at the fighting Irish. That's nothing more offensive than a drunk midget with his dukes up and his hat crooked, and he's ugly and he's short. But there's been pushback on fighting Irish. Oh, there has. Yeah, Jimmy Dunn used to have a joke. He goes, uh, "Yeah, they say uh, we're gonna get rid of fighting Irish," and then they they said, uh, "You change our name, we're gonna beat the fuck out of you, you uh, fucking homo," something like that. <laughs> That's fun. But any farts, but he's Viking, done. it's alluding to rape. Oh. I'm not saying I'm offended. I'm saying that sure, that's sure. going to be next, and you you heard it here first. Yeah, it's tough because there you don't see a Viking. There's no Viking on the side on the side of the highway going, "Hey, Viking, Viking, <laughs> trying to get a, a nickel here." Like you still see a Native American. I know, but it, don't you see it's different thing? They're not they're not canceling the Redskins because they scalped people. Ah. They're canceling because it's, it's two different cancellations. Right, One right. One is like you're offending these ancient people. The other is you're celebrating people that raped. Ah, got it, got it. That's what I'm saying. I see. But huh. again, I'm not. Again, people are gonna write to me and be like, "Vikings, are you fucking idiot?" I and know. I'm like, "No, I'm not saying me. I'm saying them. They're gonna go. Wait a minute. They're gonna be sitting around bored, not having sex, not socializing, and go. Let's go after these Vikings." But. Not to be a queef and a Jew here, but the um, the uh, <laughs> that was Kuse's cousin, queef Jew. But uh, the animals rape each other, and every every team is an animal: a lion, a tiger, a bangle, a, a bronco. Bird, birds rape birds. The, dolphins, famously, dolphins, Miami big dolphins. rapists. Well, that's down the road. That's twenty years down the road. That's coming. The dolphins, because you got to keep the the wheel rolling. You know. Eek, eek, eek. That's very good. Hey, I got a dolphin. Wow. That was impressive. That's me. (gasps) What was that? Chewbacca. Ah, I see. I thought it was an elephant. (laughs) Hey, there it is. That's pretty good. All right. A lot of people's Uh, ears probably hurt after that one. (laughs) Oh, somebody called in or or messaged me and said, when you go to the ads, there's a beep. And he said it hurts his ears every time. Oh yeah, what is the beep in the ads? What are you know. talking about? I told is it him I tell your you. watch. Oh, uh, well, uh, it's it's your watch. It's the watch beep. And when no. I no, yeah, when, we, when they go to the transition of the ads, it goes beep. We use it as the transition oh. sound. And we, when we came up with that, you loved it. <laughs> I don't get. I don't hate it. It's just some guy message. So I said I'd tell yeah, you. I could be quiet. Oh, did you ever splice that video of me kicking this off? I the have wall? it. Yeah, yeah, I have the video. Got it. Uh, it wasn't clean. Uh, it was all right. It's a gif. There it, there it is. Put that with the other. Make that a gift, uh, nerds out there. Get on it, Quiffy. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should get into a story. Did I tell you the joke about the gorilla and the lion? <laughs> uh, no. You want to? Can I do a joke? 
Please, I got I got one after you. I think people would like the joke. All right. So there's this uh, lion. He's chasing a fox through the jungle. You mm. see, or a mouse maybe. Okay. Let's okay. say mouse, cat, and mouse. It's a shitty lion. He's going after a mouse. Well, it's a snack. It's like a Dorito to him. I get it. one Dorito. Give me a give me a wildebeest. Well, it's the jungle. I don't know. Okay. He's gonna get a wildebeest after. This is a snack. Who knows? He likes right. mice. Okay. Fox better. You want to do fox? Well, I don't know. Fox and lions are hanging. Well, he's they, not hanging, he's chasing. But are they in the same region? Not sure. I don't think so. Well, whatever. It's a lion and a fucking thing. All right. We a got woodland a creature. Okay, okay. Maybe a rabbit. He's chasing him. He's running. The little mouse thing runs down his hole. Now, the uh-huh. lion runs full speed. He crushes his head into the hole. I see. And he gets stuck there. Mm. He's like shoulder deep into the hole trying to catch the mouse thing. Okay, okay. Now a big gorilla comes around. The gorilla sees the lion, the king of the jungle, stuck with mm. his ass in the air. Perfect. Now the gorilla, he likes to have sex, don't we all? Yes, yes, sex. The gorilla says, hey, you know what? I'm going to have a little sex here. <laughs> Lifts the lion's tail. <laughs> oh, I've heard this. Keep starts, going. He fucks the lion right in the asshole. Yeah. And the whole time the lion, he's stuck in there going, hey, when I get out of here, I, I, I'm going to find you. You fucking gorilla. You can't be fucking me in the ass. Yeah. And uh, the gorilla's a little nervous because he's like, you know, the lion could kill him. Sure. He's a lion. So the gorilla finishes, pulls out, comes on his back, and <laughs> takes off. And he knows the lion's going to get out. Now that he's loosened up, he's yes. got some cum on his back. Yeah, yeah. That'll help the, the slippery. <laughs> gives you strength. So the gorilla goes, takes off running, finds a group of humans camping in the jungle. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, he says, hey, B, he scares them off. And he grabs some stuff for theirs to uh, hide. From the lion. Uh huh. He gets a hat. He puts on his hat. He puts on a pair of reading glasses. One of them was reading the newspaper. So he grabs the newspaper, grabs a pipe, and he's sitting there. A few minutes later, the lion comes roaring through, and he says, "Hey, have you seen a big gorilla run through?" The gorilla lowers the newspaper, and he said, "The one who was fucking the lion in the ass." And the lion says, "It's already in the paper." Ah, it's great. It's great. Gold. That's fun. That's a classic. That's in a movie, too. I can't remember which movie. I don't know. Have you heard this? Now, we might have to edit this one out, because it's a little offensive. Uh, what if you edit? Well, what it's not my joke, and it's it's one of these jokes you tell at the uh, the barber shop, you know. <laughs> so, so We'll bleep. We'll bleep. All right, so, uh, bus. <laughs> you got to tell your kid who's smoking, he's got to put that out before he gets on. <laughs> I mean, it's not my we joke. Can't, we can't have this. Up Is that here. no good? You, what are you out of your mind? Well, it's not my joke. This thing. What are we gonna bleep? <laughs> we were doing bits. I mean, this is. Ooh, this if we can't is, get kicked out of the office, that'll do it. Ooh, I mean, <laughs> the neighbor heard that. And he's, this uh, is no good. We can't have this in there. All right, this cut is that. a family show. For cut Christ the whole sense. thing. Holy shit! We'll Jesus. cut out certain parts so maybe they can, you know, put it together. But it ain't my joke. Woo. Yeah, that is a uh, Daniel Simonson original. <laughs> so give give that a whirl. Oh my lord! No good. Good. good gravy. I didn't even think that was that offensive. Good gravy! It's so silly. Well, I don't know about that. All well, we right. had a good run. Ten years of podcasting uh, together. We got to wrap it up. Yeah. I can't be working with this kind of material. Go Vikings! <laughs> Go. Home. Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories brought to you by First Leaf. When you walk into a wine store before a party, you choose a random bottle based on how cool the label looks, right? Let's be honest. We all judge a bottle by the label. If you're tired of having no idea what the hell you're buying or what type of wines you even like, it's time to try First Leaf. First Leaf uh, delivers personalized wine boxes straight to your doorstep. Holy moly. Get started. It's so easy. You just take a quiz about your likes and dislikes, and their expert team will match you with amazing wines based on your preferences. My house is a big wine house. The lady's a wino. She knows her stuff. I don't. She always says, go pick up a bottle of wine before dinner. I don't know what the heck I'm grabbing. I grab whatever is fun. If there's a pornographic label or a naked woman or a fox eating a grape, I don't know what I'm doing. So this is a huge help. And now I don't have to go pick it up. They'll deliver it right to the home, baby. 
I love First Leaf. Every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. To make sure you've got great wine when you want it this summer, you've got to try First Leaf. Just head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. That's Tuesdays with an S. To sign up, and you'll get your first six hand-curated bottles for just $44.95. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash Tuesdays. Get your first six bottles for under eight bucks a bottle. Steal! Tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. It's fun getting booze dropped off. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesday Stories brought to you by Sheath Underwear. You know we love them. Here's a fun fact that will surprise absolutely no one. I'm literally wearing sheath right now in this moment. In fact, I'm wearing sheath underwear, and I love them. I have a, they got a pouch for your dong and a pouch for your sack, so no more sticking together down there. I got to peel my balls off my leg every damn day in this dog's heat summer and it looks like i'm tearing apart a grilled cheese it ain't pretty folks so get yourself some sheet they look good they feel good the lady likes them i look pretty hot and that's rare so uh check them out i give you a little a little generosity downtown with the with the package if you know what i mean if you don't have a dick or balls, maybe you got some sweaty tits or a sweaty vagine. Lucky for you, Sheath has sports bras, bikini briefs, and boy shorts, so you won't be miserable in this ridiculous heat. Created by our guy, our pal, U.S. Army Sergeant Robert Pattinson, or Robert Patton, sorry. This is the most comfortable underwear you'll ever put on. They were created to withstand the sweltering heat of the Iraqi desert. So you know they'll hold up at your outdoor family reunion. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath Underwear is 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code TUESGAYS. Get Sheath Underwear. Support your balls. Yeah, but yeah, good, good joke, not mine, and I, I even butchered it quite a bit. But uh, uh, that newspaper is—that's uh, a humdinger. That's fun. Well, the idea of uh, a gorilla with reading glasses and a paper is very fun. Well, what's crazy is somebody had to think of that. Somebody was in a little apartment going, "Oh yeah, oh, the paper, oh, the paper. How am I going to? How am I going to wrap this thing up?" It's really fascinating. You don't know the origin of these jokes, these old stories and and gags and things. And yeah, uh, and there's so many good little quips. Like, who was the first guy to go? Is that clear, Crystal? Somebody had to think of that. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, and I'm not saying that's the most brilliant thing on the planet, but it stuck. It's something. It's something. Wow. I have something. So uh, I was in L.A. Yes, I love L.A. I got your L.A. fever. I was there, and you're just like, God, the air is crisp. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you get through the smog, the fentanyl, skid row, and uh, homeless jizz. There's something about the, the plant, the trees. It's sm- there's a smell to L.A. There's that I something, like. yes. There's definitely a smell. There's a feel. The air is fresher, and uh, the sun is setting with the palm tree and the mountains and the twinkle, twinkle of the buildings in the distance. So I had a, a lot of... I had. One improv, one store, one improv, one store. Okay. That was my usual night. And I love Emily. I love uh, the whole Rita, the improv. They're all good eggs. Couldn't be nicer. And it's a good group over there. You got, you got Lauren Peak, Jeremiah, Schultz was in town, Santino, Tim Dillon, Joey Avery. Uh, we just had a good... That's a great group. Good group, a gaggle. Uh, Nikki Glazer was around, Adam Ray, you know, Brad Williams. It's just, it's fun. It makes you want to go to L.A. We should go I to California. Know. Let's pack up and go to L.A. Fahim's out there, you know, and uh, so I would do the thing where I'd go, all right, I'm on at the Improv at 840, and they generally run pretty good on time unless like a, like a Dane Cook type shows up. Then you got a, a store at 948 or mm-hmm. whatever. So I'm like, wow, I got an hour between sets. I'll walk it. 20-minute walk, beautiful night, podcast going, maybe listen to the set, see the city. Go through those neighborhoods. Every home is beautiful. Weird architecture, lawns, fountains, cool cars. You know, I love it. I love it. West Hollywood, a beautiful place. Beautiful. And we don't get to see that. You don't get to see a driveway every uh, every 
10 seconds in New York. No, it's just a better quality of life. Maybe we should just pack up and head out there. We'll have valley kids. It'll be like the Sandlot. Oh, Sandlot, Sandlot. Yeah, no. Forever. Squints? Yeah, Squints. Okay. So, uh, Chuck loves it. Yeah, that's a great movie. That yeah. came out. Well, it came out right in that gooey virgin years, and I needed it. Yeah, you were ten. I was eleven. It was right in our wheelhouse. Perfect. You know what I realized as years later that I was just reading about it. There's a lot of people were critical. It's quite derivative of other movies. Oh yeah. Stand by me. I think very similar to oh. that. And um, I guess some other ones. I would put in that genre. I don't know if it's. Maybe they, it feels like they took a little piece of everything and made their own movie. Yeah, but it's like the kids in a treehouse, the whole thing. It's also weird that they're like, yeah, I don't, don't want to go off in the sandlot. But then he's like, that no one ever replaced, whenever someone moved away, we never replaced him. But then you're like, but that's how you got in. Ah. They added you. Right, right. Good point. The whole story is about how they brought you in and it changed your whole life. And then you're like, but then every time someone moved, we wouldn't bring in a new guy. And you're like, well, someone else could have had your life. Yeah, I don't know if I need. I don't know if I need uh, somebody tearing up the sandlot. Ah, uh, well, it's you know, I just uh, I gotta move on with my life. I can't nitpick the sandlot. It's too. It's too much. No, it kind of stinks a little bit. All but right, it's, fun. it's a kids movie. Dennis Leary's in it for some reason. Um, it's fun. I remember Radio Flyer was dark, a little dark. Remember that one? Radio Flyer, yeah, a little bit. I never got behind that one so yeah. much. <laughs> it, was, it was on TV every eight minutes, so that one was always like, oh, and then Tom Hanks shows up at the end. I love James Earl Jones in the Sandlot. Oh, he Facebook. was great. George? He, he was blind. He hit in the temple and the lights went out. That's the way I played the game. Yes, but it's a good little metaphor for life, the big dog, and then you're, you're scared of it all day, every oh, day. Straight from Stand By Me, by the way. The junkyard dog, that's the big dog. He's scary, and it turns out he's not so scary. He's small. Right, exactly, right. Stand By Me. Uh, all right, all and right. And then they do the... Uh, Here we go. They do the scene from Cool, cool Hand Luke. That's more of a tribute. Uh, which one's that? Well, in Cool Hand Luke, they have the wash in the thing, and like she knows what she's oh, doing. It's oh, the same. So yeah, that's that, more of that's like a spoof homage. parody homage thing. Yes. But the dog and the treehouse and the and the fifties and the thing is yeah. very yeah. stand by me. Okay, play like a girl. That was fun. Wendy Peppercorn. Very hot. Very hot. Good times. Sexually assaults her. They have nine kids. That's fun. Oh yeah. That was a better time. Good so. times. Uh, what the what the fuck was my? Oh, LA. Los Angeles. You're in Los Angeles. You got one spot at the Improv, one spot at the store. Yeah, you gotta walk it. You see the neighborhood. You gotta walk it, and you, you we got the gays out there. Oh, absolutely. That's gay country. West Hollywood is the capital of the gays. Big gay, yeah. But it's a Tuesday, super gay, who day, and uh, who gay, and it was just a great time, and uh, just love it. And I, you can tell that Emily, who runs the joint. She's like happy we're there. She's like, good, come over. Let's let's mend this New York, LA horse shit. Do some sets. Bring some people in. Get the gays out. Here's a cocktail. And we had a great old time. And we're just cutting it up in that. I love that back behind the main room, green room. Yes, that's a special place. That feels like rock and roll. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's a, so much coke done there. Oh. Pryor shot a special back. I mean, insane. He, Richard Pryor was hanging out in the red suit, getting ready to go out there. Shoot the special. Crazy. Hitting a woman, doing a line, lighting his hair on fire. And you got that little gold or no, that silver piano back there. It's like a little mirror table piano. And uh, I did Sam Tripoli's show. There's like a weed bartender. It feels like show business. You know, like yes. we, we love the cellar. It's great. But the cellar's grit and New York and Dave Attell and smoking and, you know, the city and hobos and jizz. L.A., that red sheer curtain with the comedy store lit up, neon, and uh, just the glitz and the glamour of it, the red neon lights all over the place, the booths. It feels like you're in, you're, you made it. It does. It really feels like you're in showbiz. People have deals and things yes, and shows yes. and films, and it's just, uh, it's very exciting. And the mountains and that smell. Jerry. Yes, I love the, the vagina. Night, the, the warm air, the breeze on your on your bare skin. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really uh, a special place. And I, I've said since the get-go, I love that city. It's a great city. It's a great city. And it feels like people live there. In New York almost has, you go out to Queens, it feels like people live there. But New York City, uh, like the Manhattan and all that shit, like the hip Brooklyn areas, Tribeca. It feels like people will come in, live for 10 years, and get the fuck out. Yes. L.A. feels like people have lived there, they're from there, they work there, and they die there. Let's go to L.A. Ah! We'll go to the Valley. We'll, live, we'll be in Burbank. We'll have boys, you know? I love the Valley. We'll play baseball and fuck them. Yeah, it's a good time, but uh, love L.A. So I got 
I got sick and tired of this question. This is the biggest question in L.A. And it's it's not mean, but they go, how long do you hear till? Nah. Every single comic asked me that. So you know what I did? This is where I'm a cunt. I got a name tag that says, hello, my name is. You know that one? Uh-huh. And I just wrote Saturday. And everybody would walk up to me. They go, when are you here till? And I go, <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. I was so pissed. You hate how you're feeling and uh, how long are you here till? I hate how you're doing, what's shaking, what's new. I got nothing new. Well, people, they want to know if the, if you can do their thing. That's what it is. That's what it is. They want to go, oh, you can get my thing, That's whatever. That's what it is, And yeah. sometimes it's hard because you're like, no, I booked all the things I want to book. Exactly. I'm out on things. So I had a nice move. I feel a little guilty about it, but you know, I was doing literally three pods a day. I'd wake up, hungover, go to Steve-O, go to Bobby Lee, go to Santino. Next day, wake up, go to Bert, go to uh, Howie Mandel, whatever it is. So one guy hits me up, and he's a cool guy, nice guy, funny guy. He goes, can you do my pod? And I was like, eh, I don't want to say no, but I'm just wiped. And I'm like, I really have no no more room. And he's like, what if we do it after shows? Like, he's really getting kind of like, yeah. What, what are we, uh, well, I, I got three shows tonight. I'm not going to be done till midnight. Well, I could get a studio at one. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I go, how about this? I'll do the pod, but you got to do it at my hotel. And he goes, I'll see you next time you're in L.A. Hey, all right. So, okay, so you want me to do the pod, but you're not willing to come to me. Right. It's tough. It's a, it's a skill that it takes some work, but you got to be like, no, not interested. I know, but Rito, but out. I feel bad because I like the guy, and it's almost like this this slap in the face. It's almost a rejection to a guy I like. I hear you, but you're like, I'm too busy. I'm just too busy, and that's uh, that's acceptable. If he, if he likes you and he's nice, he should be accepting that. Nah. You're like, I don't feel like doing that. You're right. I you're don't right. want to do that. I got too much going on. I've done 48 pods. Oh, that was a silent leaker. I see. It fell out before I even got there. It was a chaplain. Uh, but... Yeah, I think sometimes you just gotta be like, ah, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, too late. I gotta. I need something for myself. I know, I know, because I have that thing where I have a hole in the calendar, like a free space. I'm like, oh, I'm free. But you realize you're tired from the thing before, and you got something after it. You gotta get to. Right. You know, you never think about that part, or I don't. Yeah, and you probably don't have something free. Just something you didn't write down. Probably that as well. Like, yeah, that <laughs> could be also. But I will say, nothing better than getting blotto, plastered, wasted, smashed. Banged up, three sheets to the wind, half in the bag, and walking right to that Ziggy. I'm like, I'm bouncing off the walls. Uh, I'm like Biden, and I just go to the, my hotel a block away. I love the Ziggy. I'm all about the Zig. What's annoying with the Zig is it feels like you could go right across the street, but you got to go to that crosswalk. Uh, you'll get fucking killed. Your life will end. I mean, late at night, you can kind of do a, a sprint like a frogger. Right. But at 7P, you're fucked. It is. It's wild out there. Did yeah. you get a pool view? No, nah, no pool view, but I did get in the pool. You got to get the pool view. You really? Can really do a, a Sandy Peppercorn, whatever her name is. Oh, you can yeah. really rub one out to these pool people. That's true. Do love the pool people. Yeah. You got to get down in there and you got to pretend you're looking for your son. You're like, he's down there somewhere. Oh, titties. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's right. nice to have that view. I love that uh, hotel and uh, I can't wait to go back. Yeah, it's a good time. There's even a pool balcony. I would sit out there and, and do work. Yeah, it's nice. Great, great time. So what was uh, what's the big pods you did? You did all those pods? Bobby Lee, Scoopily Boop. How about this? Steve-O. I hired a publicist, and this guy, I don't want to say too much, but he just got a divorce. Uh-huh. So he's like, his whole life is into this publicist thing now. Because wow. he had no gigs. He lives at, back at home with his mom. He's just miserable. And he's like, how about this? I'll be your publicist. I'm like, here you go. You're hired. Get me on these, this, this, and this. And he goes, I'll pick you up. So every day he would pick me up at like nine, and we'd drive to Howie Mandel. We'd do it. He'd sit there. We'd drive to Trash Tuesday. Do it. He'd sit there. Then we'd drive to Bobby Lee, and he's like, all right, it's 630. Let's uh, let's get you back to your hotel, and I go do shows. Wow. So it was a full-time job, Jerry. And then, you, you know, you get out of the pod. You have 800 texts. You go back, you try to answer them all with the guy in his car, and a sweet guy. I, I started sending him on errands because he would sit there during, you know, Leanne Kreischer's podcast, and I'm like, ah, I lost my sunglasses, and I'd give him 100 bucks. I'm like, can you buy me sunglasses? And he would go get it. Wow, wow that's nice. A sweet guy, but he just had nothing going on. And then every, every uh, word in his truck, and we're driving around. I was like, ooh, fish tacos. He goes, ah, my wife loves fish tacos. My ex-wife. Oh, and you're like, oh, shit. 
It was like that Chris Rock bit, like, you take a left with that bitch. You know, oh. everything brought it back to the wife. Like, oh, I love the palm trees. Like, yeah, my wife, my ex-wife loved palm trees. You're like, like his God. publicist. I know, I know. I should have met up with the wife and got them back together. Wow, yeah. I could, the three pods in a day, I keep doing it. It's just brutal. And like I always talk about this, the hardest part of a podcast is you finish and you got like 14 texts. Yes. You start responding to those. And then right after you respond to those, you start another podcast. Yes. And then they're responding to your response. It never ends. It never ends, Jerry. Those the, that that uh, notification it just oh. makes me it, like it, it triggers me. The I, anxiety. I just, and then you start going. I I would do on my third one. You're just like winded and annoyed, and your brain's kind of fried, and you start being to yourself. I'm telling that bus joke all over town just because you know, I'm, I'm out of stuff I'm like the, the vikings are awesome whatever it is and I, I just got too real yeah yeah it happens and then everything's recorded and you're like i'm saying too much i know public. It, it, it's really uh it's a lot i know and then it's like prior where you're like it kind of gets good to me you know i'm like oh fuck it i will say some crazy shit i don't care anymore and you get that that jolt but then yeah. it's all bad because it lives forever it's all pipes and um uh, yeah, it's wild. And then you think now it's like I'm having a son. He's gonna someday he's gonna be fourteen <laughs> and woke and have a scooped up hair with purple earrings. Oh, and he's my gonna God. be like, You said fucking this word, that yeah. word, that word. You said you wanted to suck me off. Yeah, you're pro dolphins. Yeah. What the I'm, hell? And I'm gonna be like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm also gonna be like, enjoy that swimming pool because all that shit paid for it. Exactly. A bobo, bitch. Yeah, he'll have his own personal bobo coming to beat him. But it's not gonna matter because it's a nuclear war. Sam Harris said it. Yeah, well, AI will kick in, and it'll invent so many things that uh, whatever we say will be moot. It'll be old news. Yeah, and it'll murder us. Oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully. What, what can you do? So where have you been? I've been all over. I was. Uh, well, I, I went to Providence. I didn't talk about this, according to Chuck. I didn't, I didn't mention Providence. Great city, Rhode Island. Oh, Providence. What a nice Rhode Island magnet that says so much potential. Now, that's funny. Yeah. That's great, a funny great slogan magnet. for a state. Hell of a magnet. Magnet um, schools. But Magna I went to Carta. some... Well, I walked around with Matt Wayne. We went over to the school, Brown University, Brown versus Board of Education. We walked around. We found some new neighborhood I'd never seen before near mm. Brown called White? something point... Something... I don't know what it was called. Near Brown. Sounds I like forget. beige. It was... Uh, I walked Jackie. away from Brown. Point. Pigeon point. Ah. Blow my point. Okay. Pigeon Something point. point and shoot, point and I click. See. What's the point? Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> um, this is pointless. I forget. But anyways, we had a great time over there, and then uh, great taken. sale. I sold the fuck out of those shows. New England sold over a thousand tickets. Every show was packed. They redid the whole club. They took ooh, the bar out, added ooh, more seats. Ooh, good for them. We used them, baby. That bar was a little clinky clanky. If I can be uh, so bold, it was, and they put it in the vault now. It's like its own space, oh. and there's no air conditioning. So it's like a hundred. The bartenders come out and they're just drenched in sweat. Right. They look like, it looks like uh, you know uh, airplane. Right. Well, so where where is the green room? Still in the same spot. Oh, okay. In the vault. Sorry, it's not a vault. They made like a new thing. Uh, there used to be stage right. There used to be seats back there in the corner. They built a service bar. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. It's great. So uh, thanks to them. Corey and Dave. I've been going to that club for 20 years. I saw Dave Attell there in 2003, wow. right before he did Skanks for the Memories. Wow. Same material. Brought my friend Mike Leary on his 21st birthday. We wow. went down there. And here Leary. I am, headlining, selling out, the whole thing. Uh, that was exciting. That's cool. But then Saturday night, maybe it was Friday night. Friday night, I get up there and there's this lady who was a bit. Ch- I think she might be a fan. She might hear this. Kind of hot, by the way. Her and her friend, a little, a bit, a bit attractive. Okay. Well, these attractive ladies can sometimes be the yappiest. Yeah. So she goes up and uh, I do this whole bit about Picasso and how I thought he was Italian. And she goes, "Well, if the last name ends in a vowel, it's Italian." <laughs> And I said, wow, it seems like you've never heard of Japan. And that got a big oh, laugh and clap. And, that's a good, uh, where's that clip? And I said, uh, we're working on it. It takes <laughs> time. <laughs> all right, all and right. uh, I got a good laugh. I was proud of that one. And then uh, I go, you know, something, something. I was kept joking about how the special's coming out. You guys came on a bad week. I have no material. You should have just waited for the special. That's how I'm opening the shows. I like it. And I go, I got maybe eight minutes of material here. And she goes, well, how long are you doing? How long, how much, Jesus. how long are you up there? And so then the, the security guard goes to, like, talk to her, but I was like, I don't know, 50 minutes, uh, 55, I've been up for 10, so 45 more minutes, and she's getting talked to, I'm answering earnestly, Yeah. whatever, and then about 
25 minutes later, she gets up to go to the bathroom, and I went, how long will you be shitting? Uh, About how long will your shit take? (laughs) And that was a mistake, because they had been quiet, and then her friend went, oh, that's crazy. And then when she came back, they started chatting. They got yelled at again. Then she stands up, she goes, they said I'm making a scene, which is so funny, because I'm like, well, you are making a scene. That's exactly what a scene is. You're standing up and yelling and hiling, so then they kicked her up, but they were like, they were fighters, these women, because they, no one's going to hit a woman. You got that? Well, Chris Brown. Yeah, a couple people, I guess. Ike Turner. Chris Brown versus the Board of Education. So they they shoved them out, and then you see like more (laughs) Chris Brown University. (laughs) So you see more employees. That would be a hell of a school. Oh, that school slaps. So... All these people keep running out. It's a whole thing. And then afterwards, they're like, she's still out there. And then there's part of me that was like, maybe I could have a threesome with these two Ooh, female hecklers. Ooh, now get we're talking. Out, and then I'd kick them in. Yes. To the hotel and, you know. I like, like it. Who's heckling now, you know? Great way to end the clip. <laughs> <laughs> it's the threesome. Play with her clip. <laughs> but, uh, I can't find the clip. That was fun, but all in all, the shows were amazing. Wayne kicked ass, and then we had the drive back after the late show Saturday. You wake up in your bed Sunday morning. That's, oh, the be- that's a great feeling. The, what is it, two and a half, maybe an hour and change uh, with the with the no traffic? Three, something, about three. Uh, okay. It's a haul up there, but uh, not bad. I got home at three in the morning, put Matt in the lift. Great times. Good oldies. Don't you feel cool putting the opener in the lift? I got the lift. Oh, of course. It's Love great. Love that feeling. Throw some extra cheese and uh, a couple bananas and a couple uh, Lizzo. bucks. And then I went off to uh, Portland, back-to-back weekends. Providence, Portland, two killer weekends. Something's bubbling. It's bubbling. It it's sounds happening. like it. It's, you're, you're cooking, baby. Everywhere sold out, adding shows, putting out specials. It's popping, baby. So uh, come be part of the ride. Providence, you know, we sold 1,000 tickets there. We sold over 1,000 in Portland. That was fun. I love that club. Great club. And, uh, of course, Derek and Erica, Derica, ah. my friends, they came down from Seattle, and I had Monus there. So we had a whole family hang. Me, Monus, Derek, Erica, the two kids. And he's a local queef, that uh, Monus. That's the gr- best move I ever made. Because Portland, last year I was there. And I love Portland. I've always loved it. So last year I go and I'm like, I'm going to go head to Powell's and do some record shopping and buy some books. There you go. And I go out and it looks like Night of the Living Dead, Ooh, the sequel. I mean, Yeah, zombie land out there. It ain't pretty. No, nope, no. Nope. And every two days I get an article sent to me. Portland's gone to hell. They got the atomic bomb now. There's 58 homeless in the hotel room. Yeah. So I got Luke coming. He's from Portland, born and raised, and on the playground is where he spent most of his days. Ah. So he says, I know Portland. I'm going to take you to some places. He oh. took me over to the Alphabet District. Have you been over there? I don't believe I have. I'm more of a numbers guy. Well, I got some fun facts. Matt Groening oh, is from Portland. Oh, Lovejoy. And every single street yes. is a character. Yes. You go to Quimby and Lovejoy and Flanders. These right. are all the streets. He named all the characters after the streets, but now they're so iconic that you're like, in your mind, you're like, all these streets are named after Simpsons. Of course. Yeah, it flips. So it's a beautiful neighborhood. And we hiked a park. I can't remember the name of it. Some Forest Park. I is, see. He claimed it was the largest urban park. They claim themselves like one of well, i hope not too urban but we really went up keith urban we went up and <laughs> hiked everywhere the next day i ran and then derek and the family came down so we all went out for ice cream together Woo! luke joy we had mexican food and ice cream and, oh uh, that's nice it was really a great hang we hit that pool we were in the pool to the hot tub the hot tub to the pool wow you got a pool derek in the hotel oh oh in the hotel i see that was really something then we drive up to Gig Harbor, where he lives. So I spent a couple days there. Last hang with him and the kids without my own kid. Ah, That's crazy. You got to do the thing where you're like, well, next time I see you, I'll have my son with me. Wow, you're blowing my tits. It's jarring. Wow, that is wild. So then we're driving up. uh, We're all in the fucking big SUV. The kids are in the way back. Eric is back there. Derek's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. Long drive. And uh, I've never seen this before. If I had, I forgot. Motorcycle over here, big fat guy, big fat lady. That mm. I've seen a lot. Sure. They're driving, and the back wheel tire just pops. What? And you see this. The guy's doing like a... Man. And we're driving right alongside him, and I'm like, oh, and the kids, you're trying to like, look away. I'm hideous. Like, you don't want them to see. Sure, sure. Fat and, people. Uh, this is the problem with the motorcycle is you lose a wheel, End of story. That's it. And you're fat. So you're really riding that rim. 
they're on the highway and it blows out and it's like a real like blah and then bang down they go right there i mean Whoa. you so rarely see it you watch it and uh the bike fortunately maybe they, they train in how to fall or whatever but it didn't land and crush the leg which as you might expect yeah they kind of like did like rolled and did a thing it's all happened very fast. Wow. But they both looked okay, and like one started to get up, and then in the rear view, you could see the guy was on a knee and the woman was up. Whoa, Kaepernick. But uh, it was, yeah, he did a little prayer, but uh, it was quite a sight That's to see a motorcycle really. Hog on a hog, you know, it happens. You, you can't have, there's a weight limit on that puppy. Yeah, and I, I guess you, you blow a wheel and uh, the joker got away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a great visual, though. You got to see that. It was pretty cool, and uh, luckily, you know, their heads didn't break open or anything, and they looked like they're fine. I'm sure they're okay, because I, I think that's a fear, right? The bike lands sure. on you, you're crushed under the bike. They call it dropping the bike. Ah. Yeah, but I, I, this is going to sound horrible, but I wonder, if you're overweight, I feel like you're safer hmm. well, with the falling. You're basically built out of airbags. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, but the airbags are sensitive because your skin ah, is attached. Ah, true, It'd true. Like an airbag with nerve endings. Yeah, that's no good. But I feel like the bone is further away from the pavement. Well, that was the one thing. The lady did have a T-shirt on, uh-huh. and so you're like, that's gonna be some road rash for Ooh. sure. Which hopefully, if, if that's the worst case, then you're okay. That's that's nice. Yeah. But it, it couldn't have been great. I mean, yeah, that's that road rash is such a fucking. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Oh, God. And they had wow. slowed considerably. Okay. They were probably down, to, but still, maybe 50 miles Shit, an hour. 50's crazy. 45. I mean, it was, they really dumped. I remember being a kid and I saw a guy on a hog and it said, uh, it, the shirt said, the back of it said, if, if if you can read this, the bitch fell off. All right. And, and I guess that both bitches They fell, fell off. off. I think uh, Julie McCullough had a joke like that. His stepdad had that t-shirt. He's like, the bitch is... My mom. Ah, that's that fun. That's pretty funny. Funny yeah. guy. Well, your mom's a bitch. But uh, anyway, so that was something. And uh, I got to tell you, I got one of these things where I, I don't have a lot. I mean, I went up to Gig Harbor. We spent two days there. I bought some campfire game where you tell a story. It gives you an action and a and a character. Yeah. And you go, the, the sneaky fox and Sar uh, jumped in the waterfall. And then you make up a story. That was really fun. Oh, yeah. But this, this is a preview of my fucking having a child stories. I'm like, we really told some stories and laughed. Well, you got to get that kid diddled or something just to kick it up a notch. Yeah, I'll stick a couple digits in him. There you go. Well, I just got to say thanks to uh, the people. I did the Ace Theater in L.A., which is a beauty. Downtown L.A. LA is, is a whole nother world. I think that might be where we shot the Netflix thing. Oh, really? I think so. It sounds familiar. It's downtown? Downtown. It's the Ace Hotel Theater. It's a United Artist. That's where Chaplin and all these guys, uh, you know, started their own bullshit. Okay, because I remember I definitely stayed at the Ace Hotel. Uh huh. It well, is quite a sight, and it's only gotten worse down there. Oh, yeah. But I will say, like, I walked around a little bit, and you know, what? You, you stay over here, but I just had to see it. And there's nightclubs going with a line of hot people are coming out of it, and restaurants are full. But then you go two inches this way, and it's like, ah, it's crazy. It's like a, it's like a trans woman. You're like, hey, nice tits. Here we go. Holy shit, a dick. You know, it, right, just one left turn. It's so crazy. I remember doing the Netflix half hour, whatever, six years ago, and being like, all right, we're off to the theater, walking, and then literally a guy leaning on a trash barrel, sh- barrel shooting heroin. Wow. And we're up top and walking around having with cocktails having a showbiz party damn can't believe canane did that in front of you <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's wild yeah, it's a beautiful theater too and it's just so crazy like mary pickford and uh charlie chaplin opened this theater to break away from the hollywood system because it was uh, oppressive and all that and then now it's just it's beautiful and you walk outside and it's fucking uh wuhan Wow. Yeah, it's uh, 75,000 homeless, I heard, in Woo-wee! Los Angeles. Wee! Is that Man, wild? That's more than we get of views a week. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> like the Coliseum. It's like everyone goes to see USC play uh, Notre Dame right. and then leaves and then just stays in the street. Maybe we should just get all the hobos, put them in this Coliseum, and just lock it up. Let USC play <laughs> elsewhere. Let yeah. them play in downtown LA. Well, give them one of the balls. Uh, give, give the hobos <laughs> a ball and let them fight it out. Hobo ball.
<laughs> a bobo. Uh, a bobo. But yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll get it's to gonna the come together. Hey, I will save us. There you go. Hey, I can fix the homeless, cure cancer, and take a take our jobs writing jokes. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those week, just a couple of back to back nice weekends. You hang with the friends and the family, and the, you go to the diner, and uh, just a wonderful time. I got no story. That's a that's a good life. I mean, that I know they hate us, but we're at least we had a good time. <laughs> Yeah, I had fun and uh, made money. Spectacular. No, lunch. Thanks to everyone that came to Portland and Providence, by the way. Really, I mean, great, super gays. Sold out of shirts. This one really chapped my asshole, though. So I was in Spokane a, a couple months back with Monus and uh, and Derek came to that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Spokane's a tough, that's a tough market. Yeah. Did not sell out of shirts or even come close. So then... I had to stuff them all in a bag, uh, and I was going there. to L.A. from there, and you're like, wow, I'm not going to bring these to L.A. I, have, I don't have, a, I have too much luggage, and I'm not going to sell them in L.A. Yeah. So Derek was like, I'll take them. Mm. And then I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'm in Portland in August. You bring those down. So we do Thursday, Friday, sell out of shirts, clean, Woo! gone. And I go, no problem. I got backups coming. I left them in Spokane. I got 58 shirts. That's an extra thousand bucks. Hell yeah. Yippee. And then they show up. Good to see you. We forgot the shirts. Ah. So I got, you, you costed me money. You fucked yeah, me. Yeah, he fucked you. Thanks a lot, dear. So I'm in Tacoma in January. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Uh, ship him. Uh, that's where he lives. Huh? I'm fl- I'm ship myself to Tacoma. They oh. live ten minutes from the club, oh, so that's great. my only hope. So these shirts just live there, and I'll sell them there. Perfect. All right. Isn't it if funny when a non-New York person's like, "Oh, I'll take them." Because if you give you if you gave somebody in Manhattan a box of shirts, you would ruin their life. Right. I gotta take this on the train or get a cab now. And then you're jerking it and you're yanking it and twisting it, trying to get into buildings and up the stairs. But they can just throw it in their trunk. I had a family member say that because we're moving to the two bedroom. Someone's like, "You don't need an extra bedroom for the kid. They sleep in your room." <laughs> and I'm like. My house, my vacuum cleaner is in the middle of my floor. Exactly. It just lives there. There's yes. no, like, I don't have any, th- my, you open my closet and just panties shoot out at your face. I know. I the same way. way. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just, I have stuff behind the couch, yes. under the bed. Every got, nook, cranny. Yes, the vibrator's just in my pocket right now. Right. There's no place to keep it. Mine's in my ass. <laughs> it's, it's so true. And, and every time I get a gift, like some fans like, hey, I sent you a skateboard. You know, the wife is like, where are we going to put it? I gotta just throw it out the window, and a homeless guy goes, "Ah, that's it." I know we have the office too. It's all and now everyone's sending us baby stuff. We have a baby ah. registry, so I'm just getting boxes and boxes. Like it looks like just it looks like downtown LA. It's just right. boxes and people living in them. <laughs> it's true. Oh, I gotta tell you this. I don't know how we're looking. Oh, you got like five minutes. Okay, I'll be quick. So finally finished with LA. Do all the pods. Do all the shows. I finally am getting out of there. So my plan is I'm I'm doing San Diego the next night or that night. So I go. Let me rent a car in LA. Drive to San Diego. It's a three and a half hour drive down the coast, Southern California. You can't beat it. PCH. Yes. PCP. Primo. Uh, so I get the car. They all they're all Tuesdays at the Enterprise. What? By the way, I'm all Enterprise now. Enterprise is the best rental car. They are all Tuesdays, and there was no line. And the guy goes, "We got you right here, Mister Nomad." And I was like, "Thank you, sir." <laughs> and so I was like, "All right, here we go." And I get in the car. It was a Mazda Protege. Oh. And it was a newer, a newish, and it has that dash TV, uh. big TV on the dash. So I little start it up. Woo, baby. I said, let me go to Mel's, get a little sustenance before the big haul. Absolutely. So I go to Mel's, you know, it's L.A., and I'm eating at Mel's, and I go, you know, it's weird, the TV never came on. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. All right. But I go, let me eat at Mel's, and I bet it'll turn on. It's like a Nintendo. You just start it again, it'll probably work. Yeah, blow on it, a bobo. Exactly. So, uh, blow, blow. So I, I start her up after the big diner meal. Woo, I love eating alone at a diner. I got the headphones in. But you're talking to the right guy. Started up, no TV. So I go, God damn it! I just want to, I just want to hit the road. I just want to cruise. I got two at the Balboa, baby, and I love San Diego. What a town! So I started up, no TV. So I go, fuck! It, it has the air conditioning, the radio, the the GPS on it. It's all I'm getting nothing. It's just a black screen. Hmm. So I call the place. Like I hate to do. It. We had a good rapport. We all high five. The TV in the car is not working or the screen. And she goes, Oh god! Well, we're closing in like thirty minutes. So. 
You can, if you bring it back, we'll give you a new car. And I was like, God. I said, I bet I could just drive it without the TV. Mm. Three and a half hour. Here we go. And I said, let me play with some knobs here. Hitting the AC, hitting the radio, you know, the radio alarm. Is it the, the AM, PM? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no, it wasn't the AM, PM. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, What's what the, the hell? Knob? So then eventually I hold down a knob. I just go, I'm just going to push this for a while. And uh-huh. it comes on. Oh, wow. But my point is, how would, how does anyone know that? I held it down for like 38 minutes. This is the thing about renting cars. Even without a TV screen, you get in the car, nobody gives you a walkthrough. Nobody. So you don't know where shift is. You don't know where the brake no. is. You got both shoes on the wrong feet. You got <laughs> two mirrors. And I, yes. I don't know how to fix nothing in there. I got into a rental car once. I was... Trying to shove this fob into the 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 hook, the neck, the dash. It was just you can just leave it there and you, push the button. You leave it right on there. The future is now. AI is gonna kill us. But uh, yeah, one time I couldn't find the windshield. It was just <laughs> crazy. It's almost like a new girlfriend where you're like, I don't know what's going on down here. You gotta like play with it for an hour. So uh, finally, I got it going, and I had to call him back, and I was like, the TV was on. It, it's on now. You had to hold it down. She's like, of course you had to hold it down. I was like, how do I know that? But whatever. So I got to San Diego. Great time. Great theater. I'm out of material. So you know how it is. You're just, I'm at a theater going, oh, all right, well, that's all I got. I did 12 minutes. What, what's your story? And the guy's like, I paid $1,100 for this ticket. And uh, you're asking me how my day's going? Get the hell out of here. That reminds me of I was at City Steam years ago. I don't even remember the comic's name. And he goes, what are you guys, what are you guys doing? <laughs> they go, we're on a date at a comedy <laughs> show. Exactly. It's the problem with crowd work. Like, what are we doing? We're here. I We're know. watching you. What are you guys doing is the word. I mean, I'm mad about the show is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm like, upset. Yeah, I'm fuming. That's I'm regretting what I'm doing. this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, great time. Then I flew out of Chicago. I mean, uh, San Diego went straight to Austin, did Segura, and got the hell home. Hell, yeah. That's good stuff. I'm, uh, yeah, it's uh, crazy times. And, yeah, I'm the same thing. I got, I got material, but it's not. Aces and it doesn't yes. flow. There's no yes. flow. No so it's flow. like I do a bit and it and it kills and I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, hold on one second. Oh, whoa, you gotta see yeah, that. And then same, I do another bit. Same. And so the bits are good. It's just the presentation is not uh quite where I need it to be. But I had a, I heard a nice comment. Someone said, uh, you doing your new un unpolished shit is better than a lot of comics. Whatever. Well, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but yeah. So, anyways, we're out on the road tonight. We're in Philadelphia Ooh-wee. with Umar Khan and some guest. We'll to figure be it determined. out. Yeah, we're not great uh. at planning things, but um, do that. And then uh, this weekend, I'm in Dallas, Addison, oh, Addison Improv, great club with Monus again. And uh, ooh, I love you, Monus, Monus. And then uh, September, I am in uh, Nashville. Fucking what's it called? Zanies, Zanies. Nashville, another I'm in great club. Chicago, one night only. Two shows, both sold. They wanted to add a third, and I said, "Thank you, no." What's is that? The uh, Rosemont? Uh, no, downtown. I see. But it's I'm doing it in between Pearl Jam shows. Oh, like, you want to do eleven thirty? And I'm wow. like, I don't want to be on stage at one a.m. No, but so what I, a life! I got Pearl Jam on Tuesday, Cubs game Wednesday afternoon, two sold out shows Wednesday night. Pearl Jam Thursday, heading to San what? Francisco. That's SF lunch. for uh, Cobb September eighth oh, and ninth. Oh, dude, you're is. bubbling! You're 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 boiling over. Oh, there's bubbles. There's bubbles in my asshole. We're gonna get nuked. I'm having a kid. I'm scared Whee! to death. And the special is out now. Watch it. I hope you've already watched it, but tell a friend. It's called Enough for Everybody. It's on YouTube. And watch the little documentary that uh, yes. Chuck made. This thing is, uh, everyone's loving this thing. It's all aces. Hour by hour? Hour by there hour. Episodes one through three. Mark's in the third one. You can skip ah. right to that thing. It's a hell of a time. Chuck really nailed it. Good stuff. Everybody's talking about it. It's the it's the buzz around town, the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas. And uh, I'll be all over the road. MarkNormanComedy.com for tickets. You don't say tour. Uh, I think we're in, I'm coming to Europe, uh, coming all over your back uh, like a gorilla on a lion. And uh, yeah, queef it up. What do you got, Chucky? Woo. Check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, at funbearablepod.com. We just did an episode where uh, Ray and Brad had to come meet me in New York for a meeting, and a guy at a Starbucks tried to fight me. Oh. And so we get into- uh, Was it Joe? It was Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get into uh, bully tales and revenge tales, and Ray wow. tells like an outrageous revenge tale where he 
took the doors off this guy's car, this guy's car, and pissed it. It was crazy. Whoa. It's so unlike him. It was. Really I picture yeah. him just taking a door off. He's so big. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, funbearablepod.com. It's a fun time. And yeah, check out the documentary series. Big thanks to Joe for letting me do it. I know uh, Joe was like hesitant, and uh, I appreciate it. But no, and each person that's like fucking pretentious asshole just talking about I'm like this. It was all Chuck. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I fucking hate it. I hate myself. You seem a little Blood uncomfortable Chuck. in some of the, the, the face to camera. Like, yeah, so, you know, comedy. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's brutal. <laughs> but it Talking about great. art is just really yeah. appalling. But people seem to like it, and I like it, so I'm gay. <laughs> There you go. Check it out. Check out the special. Check out Soup to Nuts as well. And uh, check out our old stuff and Please. get on the Patreon. We're about yeah, to do some Patreon. bonuses. Patreon is big. We're about to, yeah, we're about to do back to back. We're doing one on the way down. All the live episodes are on there. Shane Gillis times we two. And We just passed a year of posting uh, the old episodes. So we're up to episode 60. Wow. So nice. there's, there's, we've been doing it for 60 weeks. Damn. Isn't that crazy? It seems like we just started doing it. 60 weeks, folks. That is crazy. Yeah. I'm weak. Tons of stuff there. Thank right. you. Yeah, episode 517. I mean, we're cruising. Well, next month is 10 years we've been doing this. 10! Shelby's dead. We'll see you in hell. Thank you, folks. Be